there's corruption at the ports. Joseph, how does it happen? Give us some examples of how corruption happens at the ports. Yeah, in, 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 in human institutions, as you have human beings around, Bahamas have a level of corruption. Um, you cannot entirely eliminate corruption, but you can reduce corruption in certain level. But the way we position our way of collecting revenue has made it possible for people to be corrupted. In a sense that, like I keep on saying, if you position your duty rate to as high as about 50%, and then consumers are not able to afford, they'll be looking for ways and means to be corrupted. So it's a two-way affair. Uh, corruption takes place by two people, the giver and the taker. So it's a two-way affair. And then the, when you go to the port, the things that uh, importers go through, the difficulty, they always want to look for ways and means. Mm. The challenges they find themselves in. Um, the shipping lines are taking du on due advantage. Um, Gapowa, same. So you want to look for a way out. And that is how come people always look for ways and means to be corrupted. So how do they do it? How do they do it? You look for some, if they give you a duty rate of about 50%, mm. and you cannot afford, you go around <laughs> shopping for someone to assist you. Um, that's where you find a lot of exemptions. Yes, they go through exemptions. Some, at times, they will tell you, let your goods go into demolish. Government sees it, and they will auction it back to you. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's done. Yes, you are not able to pay for the duty. And then they tell you, let it go to demolish. Let you go to the bonded world. Government sees it, and then they auction it, and they sell it back to you, the same person. That's one. At times, they seize your product, your car. They take it to the bonded warehouse. They seize it, and they auction it as cheap as it is. Somebody has brought a car, and you are asking the person to pay fifty thousand. I cannot afford fifty thousand. Maybe you can afford thirty thousand. And then you seize that particular car. You take it to the bonded warehouse, and you auction that car for maybe about ten thousand. No. Oh yes. This is another way of corruption. So government loses so much. I mean, the, the person who brought the car will be able to afford 30000 But you benchmark the duty for 50000 which is on the higher side. Mm. And then you seize that particular car. You, you take it to government bond and warehouse. Then you auction that car for 5000 10000 <laughs> The person brings the car. He cannot afford it. He comes to see you. and say, let the, go, the car go into uh, demore, go to bond and warehouse. And then they auction it back to you, the same person. At a cheaper rate. So who loses? And that is why I remember once upon a time, um, Tiger Eye came out with a program and an investigation said government lose almost $150 million per month mm. as a result of some of these activities at the mm. port. Yeah. Um, there was a, a report uh, that was sent to the chief of staff uh, some years ago. Um, a report that was authored by uh, uh, a young gentleman, uh, the deputy uh, at the time, the deputy. Uh, director of ports, I believe he was. Um, and um, it said that we are losing over 30... Deputy Commissioner of GRA, sorry, not Deputy Director of Ports, Deputy Commissioner of GRA, Anthony Doku. Okay. And um, he said that um, we are losing 30-something odd billion Ghana cities every year yeah. to corruption at the ports. Yeah, as, a, as a result of these activities at the port. When they give exemptions for people who can afford it, huge exemptions, huge, huge exemptions, abuse of exemptions. You know, somebody comes in the name, I'm going to put up a hotel, mm. and I'm, uh, therefore I'm importing the fridge into the country for my hotel, mm. and then they, they give the, this person huge exemptions before you could say, Jack, the fridges are in the market being sold. Mm. Somebody import tiles for his hotel, and they gave that person exemption because they, they want to motivate you or encourage you to go into industry or whatever. Mm -hmm. Before you could say, Jack, you see those goods back into the market being sold. Mm. So uh, these are some of the, so coupled with all these factors, like what the guy said, it's true. We're losing so much. Mm. And if we can keep all this, if we can, we can't entirely eliminate it. Mm. But if we can even reduce it and come, the corruption level comes to even to 15%, we'll be grateful. This money can oh. go into... We'll, Other sectors. we'll talk about the ways forward and the solutions in a bit. But I want to bring in Kwabna and Frank, who are on the phones. And, um, uh, I mean, Kwabna, you are the Center for International Maritime Affairs. Okay, so I'm sure you have, uh, you have some corruption stories from a very different perspective, don't you? Okay, good job. 
Mm. Good good morning. Good good morning to the folks mm. in there. I mean, you see, one corruption festers when the atmosphere has been created for it. If you if you take the resources of the nation as the national cake, the proverbial national cake, as they say, and everybody knows the point at which a cake is consumed. It's when it's been baked and has been presented at the appropriate forum. But if increasingly it is realized by the citizenry that this cake doesn't get, by the time the cake is announced to be cut, the cake is nowhere to be found. I can tell you that at the point of even need, need, needing the dough, if people have access to it, they will begin to cut portions of the dough and probably go bake it somewhere and enjoy it. That is the situation in which we find ourselves. Corruption festers when we don't have systems in place or when we joke to have systems in place. But don't we have See, digitalization and ICOMs and all of these things at the ports? Okay. When I talk of system, I'm going beyond just the uh, uh, IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You have you have icons and things in place. Fantastic. But what do we do with supervision? What do we do with data that has been collected? How did the special prosecutor wade into this issue? And I tell you, it's just a tip of the iceberg. He got all these information because he made use of data. And that is what the systems have been collecting over time. Okay, so we can will for the rest of our living lives about corruption. Whereas the tools with which to tackle corruption is available. The manpower, the know-how, everything is in place. Probably what we just lack is the motivation to deal with corruption. So, Kwabna, I would like some examples, you know, like real-life examples of how it is done. See, Paddy just gave you a plethora of how it manifests itself, how it even begins and how it manifests itself. If you, if you have systems in place that allows for discretion mm -hmm. without responsibility, where through the say-so of one man, you can either delay your goods or subject it to huge price variation. Mm. You see, as human as we are, you, you definitely will be looking to shop as el elsewhere. Okay? So if I, if, I bring, if I have a competitor, we are all selling the same stuff in the market, and my competitor is able to get the stuff through the system at a certain cost, and I am not able to do that, and I don't have any recourse for redress. What do you think I will do the next time? I definitely will shop for how my competitor did it. You see. So, so how are they doing it? <laughs> exactly what I'm telling you. So if if the system is if the system is such that it cannot readily reward the person who is striving to do the right thing. Then the person who is traveling to do the right thing will, will eventually join in the, uh, the bad ways. And that is what is manifesting all over the place as corruption. Like, like uh, you've been told already, somebody brings his vehicle. He is not given even the right. But, but, but look, we have situations within the port today where by the time you struggle and hustle to go get your duty to come pay, a cheat has been issued. By the political elite, Explain for your that. goods to be taken out. I have had instances. Uh, don't, 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 don't forget, a little while ago, I was wearing a different cap within the port. Mm -hmm. I was the president of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders. Mm -hmm. Just about, I think, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had a host of these reports coming to us. One of these reports, I had to actually lead the gentleman to the then Commissioner General's office. It used to be a comm commissioner Kofinti, mm -hmm. where a gentleman has imported tomato paste in containers. Mm -hmm. By the time he said Jack, while he was going around even contending the, the, the value that has been given to him 
by custom. His his pride has been jacked up. While he was contending it, while while the minutes on the documents of the investigation to approve his price was being deliberated upon, mm -hmm. a cheat has been given for the containers to be reallocated to another person. Explain what this cheat is. What's a cheat? A cheat is it, 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 just a fiat, mm -hmm. a letter, a note, mm -hmm. which says that we have instructed, I mean, powers from above have, have instructed some uh, 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 the customs officers in whichever port that mm -hmm. this container the, the, uh, um, has been have been forfeited to the original owner, mm -hmm. so we are reallocating it to. And this kind of power play is so annoying. So tell us, for those of us who don't work at the ports, which mm -hmm. office or official issues such cheats? The cheat normally comes from customs because they are the only persons who. Sometimes from high, higher, yeah. other higher places like Office the 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 seat of government or wherever, mm -hmm. what whatever be the uh, legitimate reason for which those cheats are being issued, it is clouded in how do you call array of opaqueness. You right. See, if so, if the person whose goods you are allocating or reallocating. He sat down to me to understand why the goods are being allocated. Probably he might have an understanding. But if you don't do it in that manner, and it, is, it just seems to the person as though I have the power, I am reallocating your goods, then it becomes a problem. Okay. This particular case did not end very well. You what know, happened? So this leaves a certain image. What happened? How the, did that in, case on end? The mind, on the mind of the person who want to do good. Next time, he also advised himself. Kwabna, how did that case end? What happened to the, the tin this, tomatoes? This, this, this was a gentleman who would not take no for an answer. Mm. So he, he, he struggled it out. He struggled it out with authority. And I'm not sure he got every bit of what he wanted, but he, at the end of the day, uh, redeem a, a, a substantial portion of what rightfully belonged to him. So who were the goods reallocated to in this particular case? In this, oh, it, it was reallocated to other traders. Ah. And he actually had to go into the market, go call police to seize the goods on the, on the open market. Can you imagine how very horrible this situation can turn out? Okay. So, so I want to make sure that I've understood this, this very corrupt process that you've described. So, for example, I, I bring in a car, right? Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've spent money and paid for this car in, in, in Belgium or Europe somewhere. I paid to ship it to Ghana. Now, yeah. all I have to do is go and clear it. So I get to the port and maybe I'm given a, a, you know, a, some value. Uh, at which I should pay my customs duty, and and I, I I'm not sure of that value. So I'm going around, you know, trying to rectify the situation, going from office to office, asking people, is this correct, and all of that. Then finally, I'm ready to pick up my car, and I'm told that the car that I paid for, that I have shipped mm -hmm. into this country, that I'm just trying to clear, the car has been, and the word you are using is reallocated, yeah. mm -hmm. to someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without my knowledge. And so the car is, it, 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 basically my car is gone. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, sir. Go home. That, that, that's, that's what you're saying happens at the ports? Could you, let me tell you something. If you look at section 59 of the Cognum Act at 891, mm -hmm. there is a legitimate route of forfeiture where it says that a person who imports a motor vehicle into the country and does not enter and clear the motor vehicle within 60 days after final discharge of the, mm -hmm. of the ship, okay, mm -hmm. uh, will forfeit it to the state. Okay. Now, this is the law. So if the example that you just gave, if after 60 days you have not cleared, the state has every right to repossess your vehicle mm -hmm. okay but with time there is there is a process that has evolved with mm -hmm. time probably by that time the person now struggles to get the money 
to pay back the duty. So you can go back to uh, customs for uh, for 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 it to be uh, uh, given back to you. I mean, in, uh, so so to speak. But we have situations where the sister days is not even due. Mm-hmm. It's like somebody is on the prowl. He watches around and see vehicles that have been left within the port for maybe 30, 35 days. And we have, we have had instances where now the person even within the 60 days goes to want to take his goods. And he's told that he's been reallocated. It looks like people are also taking undue advantage of probably, like I'm saying, the lapses within the system. So if you have, if you have, if you have a person who is not properly uh, positioned mm-hmm. to want to contend this thing, sometimes by the time we even start the contention process, then the system be properly due. And a whole lot of things crops up. If it's somebody who easily gives up, he gives up. But then the, if there is the next time, you expect that this person will want to use any other means that could be available to him. You see, so if we want to tackle this issue of corruption, it is not rocket science. It's been done elsewhere. All we have to do is to make sure the system that we've put in place, we allow the systems to work. If you give discretionary powers to somebody, it must be exercised responsibly. It must be exercised within the remits of the law. It must not be made to look as though once you have discretionary powers, you can use it ab initio without any recourse. That's the problem we have. We are having at the port, my brother. Well, uh, so let's bring uh, Frank into this conversation, and just sitting down and listening to, you know, the conversation so far. It sounds like well, this is so common. You either have to play ball, or you suffer. So you guys are all playing ball, aren't you? Uh, honestly, um, I I cannot say that everybody is playing ball because those playing ball or those in in this together are people who know uh, are people who know people in other corridors of power. Now I want to state uh, emphatically that the introduction the introduction of the paper system by the government has sort of reduced the uh, elements of corruption a little bit because uh, often you have uh, importers or agents one-on-one interaction with either custom officers or uh, personnel of the port interacting one-on-one. But now there's a system where uh, you have to key in the details of the vehicle and then a system generates the duty for you. But not to say the system is fair, it's totally fair. The system itself is totally fair. Because uh, there's a practical situation where we had one of our union members uh, giving us two documents of the same vehicle. He imported two Toyota Corollas. I want to be very, very practical about this. He imported two Toyota Corollas. Same trim level, same features, same year, same date, same uh, dollar, dollar rate. But the values that came are different. <laughs> so you had a, a value difference of about 3,000 Ghana cities. So it prompted him to go to uh, the long room or to go and see the custom officers. So now I want to say that the system itself that has been put in place enables uh, corruption. Mm. Because of the face value of the documents, there is an inequality, which means that this importer... Uh, to his agent who have to go to customs for it to be rectified. Right. And in the process of you rectifying this, you definitely will have to work to the ground. Mm. That is the way it is. And in the process, if you do not get justice or you do not get this rectified, then it means that your vehicle will be seated at the port. It will not be minuted for it to state clearly that there is a process you are going through of which probably rent should be uh, held or should be stayed. No, 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 no. The days are counting, and if you are not able to exhaust the entire time, the 60-day period, that within the 60-day period that has been uh, stipulated by the Act, then it means your vehicle goes to somebody else. And if this vehicle is, has been allocated to somebody else from, uh, <coughs> from either uh, the, uh, the office of the president or customs, 
and all that. The person is not coming in to pay the exact duty that you were charged for. Hmm. Now, you've imported a vehicle, you've paid uh, 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 ocean freight, you've engaged an agent, you are uh, encouraging a problem, and if that problem is not solved within the uh, time given by customs for a vehicle to be cleared, you should be rest assured that before you say jet, your vehicle has been lifted to uh, a bonded warehouse. <laughs> so that would say that the system itself creates or enables this uh, form of, of corruption. But then there is this very interesting situation which uh, nearly brought about a legal tussle between uh, customs and then an importer. Often you realize that there is this um, form of shipping called consolidation. A person can or might not be able to import with a full 40-foot container means that a consolidator will bring all the importers together and then probably load their vehicles in a container. When the vehicle arrived, I'm talking, this, this happened somewhere in 2018, 2019. When the vehicle arrived, upon inspection or upon scanning, they realized that there were elements of uh, gun, powder, and bullets in the container. Then it means that the vehicle will have to be taken to a special yard for inspection to make sure that whatever uh, the scan picked is either it or not. During this process, the shippers, uh, the shipping yard, <clears throat> sorry, the, the shippers and then uh, the I think at the time it was safe bond. It's not safe bond or golden jubilee. Did not state or there was no process which enabled the system to capture that this container is being worked on specially. The reason they need to hold on the range charge or the demerit charge on the container. It took over three months for the investigative department of customs to come out with a report which then uh, concluded that the vehicle in which they found the, uh, the rifle, the elements of the rifle, belonged to only one person. Now, the other three consolidators, or other three importers uh, who, uh, who form part of this, lost all three vehicles because the accumulated demurrage on the container itself, the accumulated demurrage on the container itself, before the container was open for this investigation, the ground rent charge and the duty was unbearable for them to, to pay. Mm. A situation which is no fault of theirs. Right. And customs did not take into consideration all their complaints, and this vehicle went and then was auctioned for peanuts. Wow, I can imagine the frustration. Mm -hmm. the Listen, frustration there's more for us to talk We've about. Had a there's more for us to talk about um, when we come back uh, from these messages. Our guests this morning, uh, Joseph Paddy, Kwabna Ufuswapia, and Frank Atanle Kufiga. Uh, when we come back, it, it, it's obvious that it's the human aspect yeah. that allows for corruption. So we'll talk about that. Are, are all of these officials necessary at the ports? I thought we were automating things thought we were digitalizing things. Why do we still have so many points of weakness in the chain through which human beings can take advantage? That and more when we return. Kickstart your day the safe and right way with a freshly brewed cup of piping hot coffee from Shell Bakery or Vida E Cafe. <laughs> Reconnect and catch up with friends and unwind over cheesy beggar goodness during your lunch break at Beggar King. Relax this evening with drinks and meals at Honeysuckle and Starbites. <laughs> Relax and enjoy the perfect weekend plan filled with fun, food and family at KFC, yeah, Burger King or Starbites. Refuel your energy at Shell and let your adventure drive you on this road trip. Take a break at any of our Shell stations and enjoy any of these great offers from our partner restaurants. Shell, go well. 
It seems Royal Foam did not get the memo. Times are tough. Prices are going up. They're giving 10% discount, free pillows with every purchase. Hey, Royal Foam. Just when you thought all they manufacture are quality but affordable mattresses and pillows, they take it up a notch by being thoughtful in these hard times. Royal Foam has reduced their prices drastically. Buy a mattress, get a free pillow. Enjoy 10% discount instantly, nationwide. Take advantage. Enjoy Royal Foam. Enjoy the best. Call 020-227-1000 for other hot deals happening at Royal Foam. Royal Foam, rest assured. Are you covered? In fact, how much do you know about motor insurance? Do you know exactly what it takes to make sure that your car is all round covered the way it really needs to be? To make the right choice when choosing a motor insurance policy, you need to talk to the right people. Dunwell Insurance offers competitive rates and a choice of covers ranging from third-party cover, third-party fire and theft cover to comprehensive cover. At Dunwell Insurance, we delight in paying personal attention to our esteemed customers and ensure prompt payment of claims. So if you didn't know, now you know. Dunwell Insurance. If it must be done, it must be done well. Football's greatest season is here, and DSTV is the stadium with all the action. Enjoy every single match from the FIFA World Cup, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, the UEFA Europa League, and the UEFA Champions League. The greatest football from the greatest leagues around the world. Ronaldo, Haaland, Messi, Salah, Afenajan, and Benzema. All week, every week. Get your decoder today for just 169 Ghana CDs and upgrade to combat and be part of sport's greatest stadium only on DSTV. DSTV, it's your moment. Four man, how can I say the screening be smooth, perfect? Where it they drive fast like that? Contractor, I always they tell you say interface self leveling screen be the best solution. It they drive fast. Where it they make the job net. In fact, it pass analog. This be original digital interface self leveling screen. Hey bay, I hear you interface man. Interface Limited is the leading supplier and installer of finishing input materials for the building and construction industry in Ghana. Call us on zero two seven four nine nine nine. Or visit our website at www.interfacelimited.net. Facebook, Interface Limited GH. Instagram, Interface.limited. The ninth wonder tourist with Adansi Travel is here. It's a Nairobi, Dubai, Kigali, Dubai, an exclusive Dubai Adansi Papi Be Unforgettable Mega Tour. Come along on the Ninth Wonder Tour as we explore Nairobi, Dubai on Kenya Airways, Dubai on Emirates, and Kigali, Dubai on Rwand Air. Each of these goes for 12,990 Ghana cities per person, 25,900 Ghana cities for a couple, and starts on 9th August with over 15 different dates to choose during August and September. This package covers flights, visas, hotels, transfers, and Ninth Wonder Tours in Dubai and a great experience at the Desert Safari. Book your seats now on www.adansitravels.com or call 05955-00817, 0552-648-267. You can visit our head office in Accra, East Ligon, close to American House. Adansi Travels, feel life's beauty. Millennium Insurance has enhanced this motor insurance policy cover to make life more comfortable for you, our valued clients, and in the event of vehicle breakdown whilst on the road. To ensure your safety and that of your vehicle, Millennium Insurance will ensure that your broken down vehicle is towed to a safe place within one hour of call and 30 kilometers radius from the place of breakdown. This service is absolutely free. Millennium Insurance, your trustworthy partner, is on standby to be of service to you. Contact us now on 0501-394-997 or 0501-285-821. Terms and conditions apply. Millennium Insurance, your trustworthy partner. Coffee in your cup. Enjoy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet. Welcome back. It's the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. And today, our eyes are on the ports. Okay, so since the former president, Atamils, went there and gave them fire, 
for the disappointing performance that they were putting in when it came to corruption following um, Anas's expose. Since that time, Besinde, what has changed? Has anything improved? <laughs> Are we still having incidents like what, you know, you remember there was some cocaine that disappeared mm. you know all of these things are they still happening who are the ones behind it how is it possible today we're talking to people who use the system on a daily basis they understand how and where it gets corrupted and they are educating us because you see if we can't figure it out we, we can't solve it mm. right if we can't identify the problems we can't solve it and it's always the human factor it's always the human factor you can put in the best system in the world a human being can sit behind it and abuse it mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we're learning about today. Our guests helping us understand. Uh, Joseph Paddy is the Director of Communications for the Ghana Union of Traders Association. Kwabno Fuswa Pia is responsible for trade facilitation uh, at the Center for International Maritime Affairs, uh, Ghana. Uh, Frank Atanle Kofiga is the Executive Secretary of the Vehicle and Assets Dealers Union, Ghana. So you know these people are always at the ports learning a lot we're learning a lot from them so let me ask you this uh, before we get back to the conversation are you ready to wake up the champion in your child today that's right don't just wake up your child help wake up the champion in them with energy from milo with active go and other foods your child needs all the help they can get as they go through their daily activities milo with active go contains the natural goodness of malt milk and cocoa and is a source of vitamins b2 b3 b6 b12 c and d uh, as well as minerals iron calcium uh, phosphate and so forth Energize them with a nourishing cup of Milo every day. Milo, energy to go further. This advert is FDA approved. Now it is your time to enjoy the Royal Foam mattress at an affordable rate. Things are really hard and prices of goods and services are on the rise every day. That's why Royal Foam is bringing you a mid-year sales promotion. It's dubbed once wum renye. It is your time to enjoy a 10% discount off the current prices of our mattresses yes a 10 percent discount on our mattresses with free pillows in addition so rush to all royal foam shops and get a 10 percent discount on every mattress purchase and as well enjoy our free pillow call us on 0202 27 1000 0202 and you can get more information royal foam rest assured now, Kingdom Books and Stationery Limited says go check out their website, kingdomstoreonline.com. That's where you can buy whatever you like from Kingdom and pay via Momo across all networks. Then they will deliver to your home or office. Now, if that home or office is in Accra or Tema, the delivery will be free. Terms and conditions apply. At Kingdom, quality and affordability are their hallmarks. Okay, uh, let's get back to the conversation. Now, um, our eyes are on the ports. And it's always the human factor that lets you down. Yeah. It's always the human factor that is corruptible. Uh, Peter, why do we still have so many human points in the process of clearing goods? I thought we had automated it and digitalized it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But remember that the machines are the port. The machines at the port has been run by human beings. Mm. <laughs> yes, uh, the computers you could think of is have been run by human beings. But like I said earlier, we've positioned our tax system or revenue system such a way that it calls for human interventions and then negotiations. And one of the areas I didn't talk about earlier on in the area of corruption is the use of our bonded warehouses. Mm -hmm. We clear, somebody comes out with a, a product or import a product, he cannot uh, pay for the duty. He has to clear to bond the warehouse. And as and when he wants to uh, go for the goods, he pays the duty there. And in, in trying to take to the bonded warehouse, corruption takes place over there. Mm. They find ways and means to get the goods out of that bonded warehouse without paying a dollar to the government. But it's a human being who is mining the bonded warehouse. Mm. There are customer officers there who are mining the bonded warehouse. Mm. So these are some of the areas we're talking about. Something happened, and it, it came to my table, where an importer imports a battery into the country. He's paid the duty all right, going to clear the goods. And an agent connived with an officer, took the goods to the border warehouse, and they were clearing the goods from the border warehouse as and when. 
But unfortunately for them, <laughs> an officer, the officer was changed. A new officer came who doesn't know anything about the deal. And that <laughs> has come, they, they caught up with those guys. So wow. these are the dealings, they, these are the real facts on the ground. That is working. But all happens as a result of our tax position. That's why I say when you, you, you position your duty rate to about 50%. So you import 100,000 worth of a product and you are paying 50,000 as a revenue, a duty. At times, even the cost of revenue or the cost of tax is even more than the cost of the item. It is the only country that can find this. The, co the tax component is more than... You, you buy a, a Cora for about $2,000 and you come and pay a duty of about $4,000. Mm. Mm. So <laughs> the, the tax element is more than even the cost of the product. It's only in this country that we can find this situation. Have they also explained why the quotes are in dollars? Yes, but it's, it's international trading. We do international trading. Mm. So you bought the goods either in dollar or in euro or in pound sterling. So they quote in dollar and convert it into CD. Mm. And that is how we work it out. Right. So that is a, one of the But all this thing happens as, our res as a result of the system that we put in place. You know, once upon a time, uh, we were using commission's value for our duty. That's commission uses discretion to give it a value. You know, WTCO says no. Let's use destination inspection companies. Where they go out there, look for the prices, and based on that, they give you a duty because they don't trust the businessman. Then WTO comes, comes back and says, no, let's use transactional value. How much you bought the item? See, and, and it makes sense. So that's what we're using now. So the transaction, if I buy this item for $2, based on the $2, you give me a value on that. So we're using transactional value. Now, custom says no. Transactional value, uh, the value you brought is low compared to that which I have. So we were asking them, if you go online and go and check for prices, you make a big mistake. Because if I buy this product, about 100 containers, and somebody buys one container, obviously the 100 container will be cheaper than that of mine. Because negotiation of prices. Yes, it, it even happens to me as a business. We went to Dubai. I went with a friend. We were sleeping in the same room. In the same, we bought from the same shop. Then uh, we came back to the hotel. We were comparing prices. And on my invoice, one item was costing $6. And my friend had it for 4.5. So the following morning, I went to we went to the guys. Ah, uh, Gerard, why did you why did you so? But Quabran bought over 200 pieces. You bought just about 50 pieces. Mm. And moreover, it's Quabran who introduced it to me. So I have mm -hmm. uh, so if we come to Tema, and you see my invoice six, and you see Quabran's on 4.5, that's the transactional value. Mm. You can't say because it's the same item. So the price will be the same. So that was a difficulty we're having with Costco. That's how come they brought this benchmark value. So between your price and my price, then we have it. Mm. Mm. So it brought some respite, which we accepted. It. Though we're not too comfortable, it, it brought some respite. Mm -hmm. But before we could say Jack, the ca government came back and took off fast. this. Is, so it's go back, then, then the duty rate has to go back again. Mm -hmm. So you see the cost of uh, the duty goes up. Mm. And the businessman, who has imported the thing also looking for a waste and means because of the position you have played. So it makes compliance level very limited. Mm. People are not able to, but that's what we're saying that if you make your duty rate low, uh, we believe the compliance level will go up to clear your goods, has been shortened. Mm. And therefore, those who, the middle men, have been cut off some way or the other. But they are still in the system anyway. Mm. Uh, customs duty that people have to pay. It creates an arbitrage, which is why corruption becomes attractive. What other factors can you identify that are fueling uh, the, 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 uh, not, not just the opportunity, but the motivation to be corrupt uh, at, at, at the ports? All right. Could you? Could you? Mm. you? Now, look, I'm going to tell you something. Maybe we will need a national discourse on this one to decide as a people where, what we want to do within our ports. Now, uh, a lot of the time, people reference to go as free port, free port, free port. I mean, free port it doesn't mean when you import to Togo, you just go there without. And which means that by the time you are able to get your goods out, you, you would have spent little time. The system is so efficient that you do not pay extra fee on anything that is related to the time that you were not able to take your goods out, mm. as in rain, warehouse charges, demolition, and all of that. Mm. 
The air system is such that you don't spend too much time within the port. They have they have warehouses outside of the port where the goods are taken to. Sorry, so when you so, say not too much time, how many days are we talking about? Well, we, 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 we're talking, I mean, if, if you have your goods in Togo and you want to take them, for some time within one and a half days, you, you could take them out. And the, the, the op operative word here, too, is that they have a system in place that allows the goods to be taken out of the port itself mm. to private warehouses that are bonded outside of the port. Mm. So it is not as if you, when you are dealing in Togo, you don't pay duty. No, it, it, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an erroneous impression that keeps being carried through. Now, I am giving you this example because if you come to Ghana, it is like we have the reverse here. And apart from we having the reverse here, it is becoming a common place that every state agency that has got something to do with trade wants to locate their revenue generation point within the port or target a, a, around the port system or even charge on the basis of uh, ad valorem. Mm. You see, we are a member of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and the Trade Facilitation Agreement that we ratified in 2017 sounds upon a lot of the things that we still carry on here. And like one of uh, the panel, I think Paddy said, once you squeeze the space of the trader, and for that matter, any other human being, there is definitely going to be a certain uh, uh, backlash or a way that the, the, the person will want to wriggle himself out of where you are squeezed into. You see, it looks like the state, the state has found too many of its hands in the business of the trader. See, now, we, most of the time, we just have on customs duty. But you have all these state agencies, which otherwise, some few years back, were on subvention. It was a state that was taking care of them. Now, these state organizations, the FDA, the Standards Authority, the EP, all of them, and we even have one just coming up in 1st September, all of them uh, have been rigorous, uh, rigorously encouraged to wean themselves off the, uh, 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 how do you call it, the, the state mm. to go look out or look for money themselves. That's what they call the internally generated funds. Yeah. You see, but, and for one of a better way, let me say, unfortunately, the only place they seem or, or, or seek to generate this fund is once again on the trader. So you see that the trader space for making profit is being increasingly squeezed out. You see, so who is talking for who, how, what, what kind of conversation are we going to have around this? Are we just going to increasingly encourage every state agency? And, and the last time I, I was listening to a program on your network discussing the remuneration of directors and, I mean, of these state agencies. Now, if it is all going to come from the internally generated fund, don't forget a part of it is also going back to the state. So it is almost becoming like otherwise agencies that the state have put in place are now doing business where in time past it's not supposed to have been so. If you take water company today, if water company decides to do business, can you imagine where this country will be heading towards? But unfortunately, these participating government agencies have all entered into the business mood within the port. And as if the money they collect in itself is not enough, the time that it takes for them to provide this service, it also adds to the traders' woes, because then it, 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 it relates to demorate, uh, rent, and all of, all of those things. That's what I'm calling for a, a conversation mm. in this space, because the things that fuel corruption, it, it, is, it is not anybody's prayer that today that I'm working up, I'm setting out uh, going to be corrupt. There are certain situations that I, I can put it willy-nilly, Sets you up 
for corruption because then it is like you have to find a way to arrange your situation. Otherwise, everything is loaded on you and you cannot survive. So, Kwabna, you so what, are identifying yes. um, this uh, sort of uh, government process of uh, encouraging these institutions to fend for themselves. Yeah. That is putting pressure on them to actually see the port as a source of revenue, uh, which is also uh, exacerbating the corruption issue. Right? Exactly so. Okay. Exactly so. Uh, it I'd, squeezes I'd to... the space of the trader. Yes. I'd love to hear from Frank. I mean, you you are the trader, right? Talk to us. Tell us, from your perspective, what is the biggest factor that is fueling the corruption at the ports? Uh, I think the biggest factor will be the human, uh, the human element. Because clearly where we have uh, a lot of people, everybody trying to find their way. And there is one um, major factor which is causing this that has to do with the, the inequality in the CCVRs that different importers receive on probably the same uh, type of vehicle with the same features. I don't know whether it is deliberate. I don't know whether it is a system error. Up to now, we've been able to, sorry, we've not been able to tell what is uh, causing this. But then also, uh, going forward, we have uh, decided to engage the customs uh, to sort of inquire from them what is causing this. Because as it stands now, the benchmark value has been, has been scrapped. Uh, the dollar is also somewhere in the skies. And then the value that we are receiving from the port as it stands now is discouraging business. So as of, as of now, we have more than 70% of our members who are, who, who, they are not, no longer imported. Okay. So to talk about corruption now, uh, for the, in two months, I can tell you that it has skyrocketed, honestly speaking, because we have members who are going up and down from the Ministry of Trade to customs headquarters in Accra trying to uh, fight for or trying to ask for the reduction of values in import duties. Mm -hmm. It will interest you to know that today at Toyota Yaris, you are paying a duty of about 37,000 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. wow. But... Uh, a year ago, the value of the car itself in totality, as a sale value, is about thirty-five thousand Ghana. <laughs> so, in this case, what do we, what do you do? Government and government has rather encouraged the corruption. So let me ask you this: we've not been able to peg the uh, the dollar for importers. The city is uh, devaluing at a very fast rate, and then you have. Custom of officers, some custom officers who are cashing in on this. Mm. So it's a system that has created this. But so no, done, just a quick follow up on that. What, when you say they are cashing in, how are they doing it? What do you mean by that? Pardon? Just for you to expand when you say there are custom officers who are cashing in. Yeah, we have some custom officers who are cashing in. Instead of are you going through the system to print your CCD or do you ask for your chassis number? or you send them the uh, details of your vehicle, and then before you realize, you received uh, a quote for it, and you have to pay a percentage. That is it. Mm. I think everybody wants a fair deal. Everybody wants to pay less duties. Everybody wants to be treated fairly, of mm. which this is an option that a lot of people or some people will opt for. Now, Frank, uh, as we are discussing the, uh, the, the problems with the system, that lead to corruption. Can we also be honest and admit that as business persons seeking to protect our bottom line, we also contribute to the corruption at the ports? You, uh, you know, the members of your, your union, mm -hmm. uh, can you honestly, uh, you know, admit today that you are also a part of the problem because you willingly pay uh, or even sometimes seek out officials 
to help you circumvent the system just so that you don't make losses? I think every uh, business uh, man or woman is in to make profit. And if, uh, I, if, if, I'm, if I'm here sitting down here and I won't admit that, then I think that I'm not fair to the conversation. I think that the creation of the problem will also mean that we also have to find our way out. But we are very honest dealers like myself and most members of the uh, vehicle and asset dealers together who will not circumvent the processes uh, and then go for uh, what do you call it. Frank, so, so you're saying uh, that you prefer, you prefer to operate at a loss than to you know join the system and, and save some money? Um, I will not. Uh, I will not want to operate at a loss. Right. The same way, I will not want the, the system. I will not want government to lose money. But I think fairly, uh, we should all have a good playing ground so that we all. It should be a win-win situation. It shouldn't be a, a lose-win or a win-lose situation. Hmm. So yes, um, so we have some members who will uh, use that channel, take opportunity of it, the loopholes and then make gains out of it, yes. Hmm. Uh, let, let, let's, uh, in fact, if you're listening, uh, we're talking about the ports, our eyes are on the ports, we're talking about corruption at the ports, we're learning how it happens and how we can we can stop it if possible. Uh, because, look, the amounts of money we're losing through the ports are, are shocking. Uh, I keep referencing uh, what the Deputy GRA uh, Commissioner put in the report that he sent to the Chief of Staff uh, when he said that we're losing over 30 billion Ghana cities every year to corruption at the ports. I mean, I want you to think about that for a minute. 30 billion. Uh, how many billion dollars is that? Okay. How many billion dollars is that? Almost $4 billion. How much were we expecting from, from the e-levy alone? Well, we're losing that at the ports. We're losing more than that at the ports, actually. We only wanted six, uh, what was it, 6.5 billion Ghana cities from the e-levy. 30 billion is uh, evaporating into people's pockets at the ports. It's a big problem. Let's figure out how to solve it. Um, and uh, Joseph, you, you speak for Guta. Yeah. Okay, so the port is really there for you. Okay. Uh, if, if for you the problem is high values, high um, values, yeah. even if you make it cheap, the presence of human beings means that there will still be corruption, would there not? Yeah, but it will minimize. It, it, because if the rate is lower, why would I want to go and see a, a third person, a third party, to sort me out? Mm. Yes, I'll be, I, I can afford it. So obviously, I might want to go go in and pay. Yes, mm. it's like a policeman arrests you. He say, if I take you to court, you pay three million. But let's negotiate and pay 50 Ghana cities. Which one will you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> exactly so. So you might want to go for the 50 Ghana cities and then find your way out. Yeah. So that's what we're saying. If you make uh, the rate lower, compliance, compliance level will go up, obviously. It will go up. And that's what we've been calling for. But like uh, 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 my other colleague said, the, the port, all the agencies at the port, their duty w is to facilitate trade. So when the trade, the businessman grows, your revenue grows. That is how it's supposed to be. But it looks like the uh, uh, attention has been shifted to revenue mobilization without looking at the facilitation of trade. Mm. So you see almost every DEX at the port, all the agencies, they have a DEX at the port. Their intention is to mobilize revenue. But how would you mobilize revenue when you don't facilitate trade for the businessman to grow? So the, the businessman grow, your revenue grows. That is how it's supposed to be. But it's the other way around. They are trying to mobilize revenue, and then they pretend to be collecting, and we also pretend to be paying. <laughs> that is how it looks now. You see, yeah. and, and that is our challenge and our difficulty. You know, recently there, there's a, a release this morning that from 1st September, yeah. there's going to be uh, marine insurance on importers, okay. where you have to pay your insurance here. But in our dealings, it's cost and insurance free. CIF. So we're saying that. See, so now somebody is looking for opportunity to another, take another money. <laughs> Meanwhile, we, uh, we, for example, I have an agent out there who has given me a goose on credit. He, 
he has interest in the goods that I'm bringing. He said, therefore, because of my interest, I'm insuring the product there. He said, no, come and do the insurance. So this has a difficulty. And this one, Guta will kick against it. Mm. Yes. You see, so uh, the, the systems, the system that we are putting in place is not facilitating trade, but it's rather killing businesses. Mm. And people are pretending to be paying. You know, yeah. that's our difficulty, Kofi. Mm. Kojo. All right. Um, uh, Kwabna, I wonder whether you can share some international best practice with us. How have other countries solved this problem? Kujo, mm. you see, the state should not seek to feed on the misery of its people. It's, it's particularly in this week that we are members of the World Trade Organization. Two, we ratified the Trade Facilitation Agreement just in 2017. The ink is still not even dry. We have made it part of our laws. It went through Parliament. Alaji, so we don't have See, a printer. Now, printer? there are, there are printer. Nuggets, nuggets in there that the state. How the, the kind of framework that must be created to ease the rules of the trader. Because if he doesn't trade, wherein lies your tariff and his application and all the revenue you seek to generate from his activities? You see, so one very major plank of the Trade Facilitation Agreement, which talks about fees and charges, it says that, look, don't, don't target the trader on the basis of ad valorem, where you say that the service that you are providing the trader, the trader will have to pay you on the basis of how much the wares the trader's worst cost. That is immoral. Because if a trader brings a good whose value is $1 million, and the service you are going to render, what, what, whatever regulatory service or regulatory oversight that you have on that particular item, why do you link it to the, the, the value of the worst? and say that if you provide service A, you are going to take maybe 0.85% of the cost of that item. So the trade facilitation agreement rather says that, look, measure the service that you are rendering and charge appropriately. But it looks like we ratified the law and sat back, and participating government agencies have a free day. Hmm. They charge Whichever way that they feel like they must have, if it is ad valorem, they slap it on it, and we are all watching. You see, but the service that these agencies will give, it varies depending on what kind of activity that must be rendered. So why target to the ad valorem situation instead of a strict levy or a strict tax? You see, so... These are the things that makes other ports mm. more competitive. And mm. if we are not very careful, I mean, but just about so, some few years down the line, if you are using the uh, the Nungwa, the beach road to Tema, you could see you could see vessels line up calling at our port. Today, go to a flower, mm. stand on the beach at a flower, mm. and you see vessels now line up calling on the Togo port. These are signals that we must speak. Otherwise, you see, if, if we want to get everything today, we might lose it out tomorrow. All ports are getting efficient around us. Cote d'Ivoire is doing same, Togo is doing same. Even Benin is doing same. Everybody is injecting efficiency into their port. If we want to load everything on the Ghanaian trader because it looks like it is a pleasant thing to do without lifting too many hands, you, 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 you can also plug your proboscis into the Ghanaian trader's pocket at the port. And it's, it's becoming an in thing to do. Mm. At the end of the day, you stifle his space, and then he must find a way to live. Either if he still wants to be engaged in the trade, then he must find a way to survive. Otherwise, he ceases to be a trader, and you cease to get your revenue. It's as simple as that, Kujo. Yeah. 
Listen, just before we get uh, solutions from Frank, I, I just wanted to uh, touch on this thing about the insurance, the maritime insurance uh, thing, Joseph, that you mentioned, which is supposed to kick in from the 1st of September. I mean, I was thinking to myself, I mean, you guys have to pay for insurance anyway. Obviously. You are currently paying in other countries. This says pay it here so that Ghana benefits from that um, that thing that you have to pay for anyway. Yeah, but it's, uh, it should so be, then it should be optional. It should be optional then. Because if I'm getting a product from my agent and he's giving me a facility for maybe about $100,000, $200,000, and then uh, I'm, not, I'm not paying a dime, come and sell and pay me. And then he said, I have interest in this, therefore I have to do the insurance there. Mm -hmm. And the efficiency we're talking about here, you know what happens to our insurance? Even when your car, your car got, get damaged, how you struggle to get the, the decent you paid, you know? So these are the difficulty we will say. So it should be optional. Mm -hmm. If I want to do it here, fine. If my agent want to do the insurance there, that should be bad. If you impose it, that compulsory mandatory must be done here. That's a difficulty. Could so I, could I, I, have a, I have an issue. So how about your interests in the goods? Uh, my interest is that I'm, I'm bringing the goods to Ghana. Because he's giving me credit. Yeah, but you don't, you don't care about insuring it? So he does the insurance because of his interest. Yes, because he has a huge interest in there. Maybe he has about 90% interest. You have just about 10%. But even if it's 10%, mm -hmm. But something happens, the unexpected, yeah. and you lose that 10%. Uh, uh, because he hasn't done the insurance there, mm -hmm. it covers the whole staff. I hope you get it right. So, so you redeem your 10% from him? Yeah, exactly so. Exactly so. Rather, so it should be optional. If I want to do it here, um, and our, our, one of our difficulties is that the posture of our insurance companies in the country, um, maybe, uh, maybe now they've changed, maybe we don't know. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. Yes. So uh, they are... Uh, fast track, in paying the premiums, paying the compensations. Yeah, most insurance companies. Now are, they do. To the best of my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. You've had experience. So, so, like so your share resistance them. is because you don't trust the insurance companies in Ghana today uh, to do prompt payments of claims. Yeah, compensations is one. Um, two, uh, we don't know the amount that is going to come in. It might be huge. So if our, your agent can take up that responsibility on your behalf, why not? So what you're saying is that the moment someone else foots the bill, if you have to pay it here, you will have to foot the bill. Exactly. Okay, which will become an, ad, an added, Ad, cost. added cost too. Right. So obviously I'm going to pass it on to Mama V and <laughs> you, uh, as a consumer, obviously. Yeah. Yes. You see. We have some very responsible insurance companies on this on this platform that we you know we mentioned. So we don't mind. We can direct you to some of them. That they are prompt <laughs> on their compensations. <laughs> Um, uh, we, we hope so. Yeah, yeah we hope so that it, it things change. Yeah. It's it's all part of trade facilitation. Yes. Why not? If you want to insure your product for safety, for security, we want to do it. But the insurance companies don't, don't want to go to the hard areas. That's the difficulty. We are asking them to come to Abosokan. They don't want those areas. They tell you the risk factor is high, so they want a cheaper way. You know, that's my yes. Yesterday I had a program with one insurance company yesterday, and I told them. They said they want to do the car insurance. And I said, what of our shops? Mm. We are not interested in our shops. Insure our shop against theft, fire, water, flood. They are interested. They, those areas are high-risk areas. Mm. People go there and they say it's high-risk area. They don't want to go in there. They want the cheaper areas. This one, free for all. How many uh, times have you heard that the ship has sunk? Yeah, so, <laughs> for the Christmas. You see, these are the difficulties. So, if you are going to do go into business, you are an insurance company, you must be able to engage us in all fields. Don't, don't be, do choose and pick. Where you, are in, you ask for a car, yeah, we can do, but as for your, your shops and the other areas, you can go in there. So it, it's, it's a difficulty. All right, uh, we're gonna wrap with Frank now. Uh, and look, uh, the, the, the cost of vehicles, uh, it, 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 there doesn't seem to be any sign of it coming down. Um, but if we could cut down corruption, maybe we'd have a chance. So you tell us, since you've also admitted that your own members are sometimes part of the cause, so what solution can come from your members to help curb corruption at the courts? That, that would be very difficult to, to tell <laughs> the solution from our members. You can uh, advise your members to adhere to the policy of uh, the court. But if the system thereof do not give that enabling field, it is very difficult. It should just be 
taken into thin air or just telling them uh, to keep quiet and suffer. But then to come to your first uh, part of it, I don't think uh, cost of vehicles are ever going to come down because we have to embrace ourselves. Government is actually uh, preparing to impose an extra 35% on the vehicles that we are importing. So uh, it is very difficult for you to afford uh, the same Uber you were buying uh, two, three, four years ago for 25,000 Ghana cities. But then, I think we have to be fair to ourselves and then the government. If the systems that have been put in place are working for us and in our favor in order to inure to our benefit and to inure to the benefit of government uh, mobilization of funds, I think nobody will go in looking out for other incentives or get, getting better deals and getting themselves involved in corrupt activity. I think the government should set up. They are doing well. The introduction of the paperless system icons, they started. We have to encourage them to do better and then to more or less uh, decrease the human activity at the port and increase the paperless uh, system. Because it's a paperless system, yes, but you still have that interaction with uh, custom offset in terms of marking, inspection, national security, uh, and what have you. I think if that is done, and it's done very well, I think we will all have that uh, peace of mind, and then corruption can be reduced uh, to its barest minimum. Mm. I want to thank you uh, very much, uh, all of you, actually, for, for this insightful conversation. Frank Kofiga is the Executive Secretary of Vehicle and Assets Dealers Union, Ghana. That's the last person you heard. Before him, you heard from Joseph Paddy, Director of Communications at the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta. He's here in the studio with us. Also on the phone lines, Kwabna Ufusu Apia, fellow uh, responsible for trade facilitation at the Center for International Maritime Affairs, Ghana, CIMAG. Gentlemen, God bless you all. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. We're back after these. I'm really upset, and I think that I should let you know. I was waiting for the Anas video to be shown, and that confirmed the reports that I've been having all along. Officers of Customs, you are Ghanaian citizens. You have to help us to build a better Ghana. But if this is the kind of behavior, this is the kind of attitude that you have, you are not helping us in any way. Indeed, today, I came to express my disgust and my revulsion at the way some of you are helping to erode the benefits that we are making or we have to give to our people. You are in charge of revenue. Every day we hear reports about malpractices. People collecting bribes with careless abandon. People who think that they are entitled to take bribes. How can we get rid of corruption? I'm not saying that nobody should appreciate the work that you are doing. But when you make it a condition, somebody should give you some money before you perform your duties. I've known Kassan for quite some time. I was Commissioner of Internal Revenue. And the Anas video confirmed the fears I've had for quite some time. Look at yourself. I want to talk very frankly to you. Somebody joins customs. Two, three years, the person is putting up a building. The person owns a car. In what organization will it take you three years to build? And it is not the exception. It is the rule. Very often, my Minister for Finance is worried about the fiscal gap that we have. And your duty is to collect, to display transparency 
in the way you operate. And I'm happy with the initiative that General Mode has taken. And I give him my full support. My brothers and sisters, let me be very honest with you. If it means transferring everybody, I will give him the authority to do so. If it means changing all the people in customs, I will do so. Because we do not owe anybody anything. But I know there are good people amongst you. The good people should be influencing the bad ones. Because your reputation now has been soiled. And this is something that we have known all along. And I want to use this occasion to send a signal to your colleagues at Aflao. I'm aware of what they are doing. And very soon, we'll descend on them. This was Kwame's life before Interplus in Green Irrigation System. Kwame, sorry, oh. what are you In the dry season, Kwame would use buckets to water his five-acre farm. By evening, he's so tired. So his wife said, Oh, Kwame, Emre Dania, Danny B, haven't you 